Um, I want to introduce now the session on Spintronics. We have uh, two invited and um, uh, three contributed papers uh, in this session. Uh, it's going to be very lively. We have a lot of uh, interesting and exciting alternative technologies that are going to be discussed. And I just want to mention that after all of the talks, we will have a panel discussion, uh, where, uh, which is short uh, because, again, it stands between uh, the, uh, you and lunch. So, but we will have about a, 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 20, a 15 or 20 minute uh, opportunity. We'll ask all of the speakers after, the set, uh, after all the talks are over to, we'll, we'll set up some chairs and uh, have opportunity for additional questions and we'll try to uh, broaden the discussion, uh, get some, some comments and uh, questions from the audience. I'll try to seed that uh, discussion with a little bit of uh, spice and, and you know, tough questions so we can debate what, uh, where the field of spintronics is going towards some of the systems uh, uh, goals that we heard about in the first session this morning. So with that, I'll introduce the first speaker uh, who uh, goes by Jimmy, Jimmy Zhu from uh, Carnegie Mellon University. And he'll kick us off with a talk on uh, spin logic devices. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Jeff. Oh, then it's great to be here. And uh, so my talk is uh, M-Logic, and that's a new uh, spin logic device and circuit. So here are my colleagues at Carnegie Mellon, and uh, Professor Larry Pledge and I lead a group on this. So, um, so I'll give you a little introduction on the basic mechanism, that uh, the physics that is uh, behind this, and then the, the device design, the circuit design, and uh, right, and then talk about. Um, actually, we did a fabrication. We were actually want to demonstrate um, this logic circuit, and uh, then a little summary. So, so basically, this uses a spin hole effect. And what spin hole effect is like if you, for example, if you pass in a current in platinum, and what what does what happened to the current is actually there are spins scattered in the transverse direction and the different spin orientation that is scattered into different opposite transverse directions. So you can see um, that there are flows of electron in this way and flows of electron in, in the opposite direction and that, that have opposite spins. Therefore, if you, uh, probably this is a better view. So if you look at this, the charge current in the transverse direction is completely canceled, right? Because there's no net electron flow. But however, there's a net spin flow because up different spin orientation will, scale, will move in different directions. So you have a net spin current. So this is a way to generate a pure spin current without charge flow. Okay. So by this, then you can imagine this design. So you have a platinum film, thin film, and then you have a magnetic thin film, right? Then what you see is if you pass current electron flow, flows underneath in the platinum, you will generate a vertical spin flow that is non-charge flow, no charge, and free of charge that inject into the magnetic material. Okay, so, so that's the spin hole effect. And so if you have a magnetic domain wall in this magnetic film above, then that um, spin hole effect can generate, a, a, can move this domain wall, okay? So, but however, it needs something else. It needs something called just jashinsky maria interaction. And that happens in a lot of interfaces between a non-magnetic metal, a normal metal, and a magnetic metal. So, for example, a platinum with a cobalt. So, what it does is it generate a, a force if you have magnetization variation. It has to do with how the magnetization changes in space, right? How, how the spins vary in space. So, you have a domain wall, then the spins vary in space, and that will generate a force, and that force is in x direction, force this domain wall into a nail wall configuration. That means the magnetic moment in the center of the wall is actually in the plane and, and, and uh, uh, towards the, the wall direction, right? So um, different, this DMI interaction, different, well, uh, um, diff the sign will determine whether it's oriented this way or, that, or, or the opposite direction. So if you have that, the spin hole Effect. So this is the effect of the spin hole to the magnum, to the spin moment, and that will generate a torque that will rotate the domain wall. Okay, 
So um, if your uh, DMI direction is opposite, you will, uh, if you inject the current, you will move in the opposite direction. So and nevertheless, so basically what you see here is the moment change, the magnetization that changes in direction that domain wall moves is really proportional to two things, right? Why, so it's a proportional to this ratio. The top is how many spins you actually inject using this spin hall effect, okay? So this times that angle is the how many spins you inject per second. Then the bottom is the total moment of that domain wall that, that you try to move. Okay, so the, 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 the number of spins, right, is really an angular momentum transfer. Okay, so, so we um, make, we made some of these films, so this is a test structure of platinum and tantalum nitride on the top, and the sandwich is a cobalt nickel perpendicular multilayer. And uh, so you, um, you send a current pulse, you can see this domain wall moves, okay. So you actually can s measure its speed. And uh, and uh, and uh, uh, versus current density. I'll talk about that later. So you, you have this spin hall effect, and this actually actually um, is a uh, um, cause a, a, a very extensive research effort in the physics um, area. So um, so here we use that effect to try to build a device. Okay. So here is the device we call it M cell. So it's a four terminal device. On top there's a magnetic tunnel junction. What well, magnetic tunnel junction is, is uh, you have a, a two magnetic electrodes with a tunnel barrier in between, right? So um, this is the base of uh, STT MRAM right, today. So um, the next talk will talk a lot about this. But uh, in, this, in this design, the two electrodes actually it's on the same side. It's all on top. So you, you can have, you, the read path is you go through a barrier twice. And this is the free layer and that's the reference layer. Reference layer means the magnetic moment is fixed, and the free layer means it can be altered, okay? So then the, there's another path, it's called a right path, and the, that right path is just uh, this spin hole metal strip, okay? So you, have, you can inject a current from one side and it goes to the other. On one side the spin is up, but the other side is spin down, you have a domain wall trapped in the middle. And then the, two, the, the read path and the right path is coupled magnetically through, uh, say, oxide layer. So that's insulative electrically, but magnetic coupled. Okay. So as you pu push a current into this right path, right path, you move a domain wall from one side to the other, and therefore you reverse the magnetic moment in this center region, and then you will cause the free layer to switch, and then cause the resistance to change on the top read path. So basically you have your electrically insulated a read path and a right path, okay? So uh, this is no different than a current uh, uh, tuned resistor, right? Okay, so that's a sort of switch. So, um, so th to put a use of it, is this is the M-logic, basic M-logic circuit. So this is an inverter. So what you have here is you connect the read path into a s serial, okay? So so this is a, a parallel state, has a low resistance. This anti-parallel state has a high resistance, so they have complementary states. And you send a, a voltage pulse positive here and negative here, suppose it's symmetric. Then, then because this has a higher resistance, this has a lower resistance, so therefore the voltage here is higher than the ground. And you connect this to the next stage of the right path. Okay? The right path is a low resistance path, so therefore if this is higher, then generate a current. And when you generate a current pulse, then move the domain wall of the up state, okay? So therefore changes, so this from, from, from high to low, and this from low to high, okay? So therefore, then you can keep doing that and uh, do the next stage. So what you can see here is you actually generate a logic circuit. Although this has no intrinsic gain, but using this technique, you can generate a logic gain and do have a fan out. Okay. So, um, so this is uh, some uh, micromagnet simulation with spin hall or DMI effect included. And so you can see you pass a current and all, uh, so you can switch the state. Okay. So um, this current density is actually quite high and this actually is, uh, uh, correspond to experimental value we, we, we have today. And uh, this is with uh, today's material. And however, this right path is very thin. It's two nanometers. I 
Okay, so therefore you don't have to send a lot of current, although the current density is high. And another thing is a very low resistance. Right? That's an advantage. Okay, so if you look at this, you say, all right. So each gate, uh, this has inherited memory because this is non-volatile, right? So each gate, the logic gate state, the state is inherited non-volatile. It has a memory in, inherited in it. So, so therefore, you want this, and there's an energy barrier between these two states, right? One on this side and one on the other side, right? This, uh, this domain wall. So, so as this dom domain enter the free layer, and then you actually, the domain wall area increases, and that's the energy rises, okay? And then after you pass through this device, the energy falls. So here's the energy barrier. In this specific case, it's more than 1.2 electron volt. So that's more than 40K, 50K, T, K, T uh, for the room temperature. Okay. So um, you can send the current, at dip, so you can send this current pulse, you see how fast they switch, right? So, so this is one times 10 to the eighth. This is correspond to, about, uh, for a 10 nanometer wide device, about 20 microamp uh, current. And uh, so you can see as you increase current density, um, 30%, and you can reduce the switching time from what, 0.5 nanosecond to um, uh, point, uh, in decrease to, to uh, 0.25 uh, nanosecond. So you can see this, this device switches in a fraction of a nanosecond, okay? Not too faster than that, right? So it is, uh, right? so it is slower than CMOS. So the advantage you buy here is the non-volatility and the memory you inherited in it. And you can actually reduce this uh, switching current a bit by, um, by oh man, this thing dies. So um, this, this magnetic insulating layer, and if you actually reduce its coupling energy, not have fully, fully a very high strong exchange coupled, actually, you can actually reduce its, uh, its switching current a little bit and still robust. So, um, so then you can form this uh, circuit, uh, M-logic circuit. So this is when you have a 10 nanometer device, and then when you get to that node, and uh, then you can see, uh, um, I, I can have, for a typical MTJ, and you can have some 20, uh, 30, min 30 minutes, uh, 30 millivolts driving voltage at 20 microamp current. Okay, so um, you can have multiple fan outs because if the right path is a low resistance. So um, one of the things um, you have to consider here, on the device level, you actually, in terms of power, you actually don't win with CMOS. But what it is, is this memory you have inherited, right? And last time we heard the first speaker that the excess memory is five times more energy. So here, the memory is given, okay? So bit sequence, uh, bit serial type of computation performance is very advantageous. So when you do a circuit synthesis, and this is, has to be taken into consideration, and you actually win in system level. So here is a, a sort of a, a simulation, and that's presented at the DAC 2012. And so you can sort of take in the device behavior right into a log A, and then you can uh, do the comparison, and this is for comparison for uh, ASIC FFT, and so you can see on the performance, um, if the CMOS is running at a sub-minimal voltage, uh, 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 like 0.35, 350 millivolts, and the M-Logic is running at 100 millivolts, M-Logic actually went big because the CMOS is very slow at this low voltage, okay? So um, we're trying to do the experiment demo and try to uh, make this and try to demonstrate this technology. So here's a chip, we actually presented at the IEDM last year. So, um, so you can see, uh, so there are many, many complicated, um, my time's up, so I gotta speed up. So you, you have to develop this uh, good MTJ that with a perpendicular anisotropy. So this is, uh, um, this is using cobalt and boron, and this is borrowing a lot of understanding from STTM RAM. So you can actually build a perpendicular, uh, the, all the magnetic layers are perpendicular uh, a strongly perpendicular isotropy, and you can build uh, something like a um, 2x resistance change, right, uh, for the magnetic, and so 130% magnetic resistance ratio. 
and then yeah, you can see the right path and we, we do the we, um, uh, engineer the materials and you look at the current versus how fast this domain will um, speeds up and uh, it's actually a very good number compared to what's in the literature. So, um, so we also develop the insulator and the magnetic insulator can electrically insulate it by the magnetic couple. So we did this uh, study. And uh, so eventually you put all the film together and then you can have to fabricate a device. Okay, so these are the actually M, M cells and these are testing structures. Okay, and this uh, for, for a university to make this is actually quite challenging because you've got to share this facility with other people, right? So, so you can see this is a, a fabricated device that's a cross section and this is two read um, terminals and that's the right path underneath. Okay, and uh, this device is sort of bended when you make the sample. So this is an overview, uh, plain view, right? So you can actually switch it and the, the device will be made and uh, if the current is not su uh, sufficient large, you're actually stuck in the middle as they pass one electric and they're stuck in the middle, okay? So, but if you have how many pulses you need to switch it, and if you have sufficient current density, you can switch it, okay? So, and the, you, you went, so this at the one times 10 to the eighth um, amps per centimeter current density, you actually can repeat it every time. So here is the current you send in, and here is the resistance you obtain, okay? So, and you can actually switch this device uh, very, very uh, robustly. So, but uh, now we are trying to uh, make one more step to demonstrate the fan out, and, and that's why we have been doing that uh, for the past six months. Okay, so, um, so the idea is really you have a, a M logic chip, and that's all metallic, completely magnetic, and then you have this pulsed CMOS, maybe uh, some rough CMOS circuit supply use current pulse, and the current pulse is also logic. And uh, you can design blocks that can be temporarily, you know, sleep because now time, this energy intermittent uh, sources is really good for this, right? Because if you turn off the current voltage or turn off the power supply for M logic, everything's still there, okay? And the power comes back, it will continue, okay? You never, you never lose, lose, right? So that's one of the biggest advantage. And also, it's uh, radiation hard. So this initially was su uh, supported by I uh, a sibling grant from IAPA that they're interested in the, uh, um, this uh, uh, red hot uh, uh, computation. Okay. So here's the conclusion. So basically, we're we're in the in the mission try to demonstrate this the full M logic circuit. Thank you. Great. Questions? Okay, in the back. In, in different directions, right? In current, yeah, right. You, you, of course, yeah. you, you need a voltage. So there actually, are some little resistance of the right path, right? Yeah. So you have right. to change the polarity of applied voltage, right? That's right. And at the same time, the output of your device, it has the same polarity. You just change the resistance, right? So, so why does this, this current flows in and out depends on these states? And these states is depend on previous states, exactly like how CMOS works. Okay. At CMOS, you have the same polarity. No, the voltage polarity is always the same. It's just this driving is in and out, just like a high and low. It's exactly like CMOS, how it works. It's a bipolar power supply. It's a, it's a bipolar power, right. But you can make the same power by doubling the device. But so yeah. the output changes polarity in your device, right? Sometimes it's minus volt, in other cases, plus one volt. That's why, right. that's, that's a high and low. That's your logical output. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do you want to ask a question? Okay. Um, so we, I, I think this is very nice, and I'm convinced that uh, you have fan out. <coughs> I'm yes. convinced you have gain. Yeah. And so all that is good. Uh, I'm also convinced that you can probably run this at very low current. This is good. But uh, one of the uh, things that we've identified that the systems people have identified for us is the on-off ratio. So this is the weak point of magnetic switches. That's right. Uh, so what are you going to do for the on-off ratio? Okay. Mm -hmm. For driving 
the circuit, if you all, they're all magnetic, right? So you use magnetic to drive magnetic, and as long as you're not driving CMOS, and uh, on-off ratio of 3x saturates. Okay, so 3x, 10x doesn't make too much difference. He's asking about leakage power, though, Jimmy. There's no leakage power, right? So it means, in a sense, is you only run it when you need it. Right? There's no standing by power. Because it's always driven by pulses. It's always. After, after the logic operation, the pulse turns off. Exactly. So everything stays. And that's a nice thing. There's a certain gain, that, win that you can get on leakage power for that, but it's not infinite. But we'll come back to that in the, in the uh, panel discussion. All right. Thank